with Peter Jennings, reporting tonight from Washington. Good evening. We begin tonight with the official version of how and by whom Pan Am Flight 103 was blown out of the sky over Scotland three years ago, just before Christmas. 259 people on the plane were killed, 11 on the ground, when pieces of the plane fell on them. The formal investigation has finally produced two indictments. Today, the United States and Britain point their fingers at two Libyans working for the Libyan Intelligence Agency, who they say planted the bomb on Flight 103 and caused it to explode. Here's ABC's Pierre Salinger. The indictments announced today at the Justice Department pointed directly to Libya and named these two Libyan intelligence officers. We charge that two Libyan officials acting as operatives of the Libyan Intelligence Service, along with other co-conspirators, planted and detonated the bomb that destroyed Pan Am Flight 103. The indictments charged the two men with traveling from Libya to Malta with a Samsonite suitcase. Early on the day of the explosion, the unaccompanied suitcase carrying a Toshiba radio, which had been converted into a bomb, was placed on an Air Malta flight to Frankfurt. Once there, the suitcase marked with stolen baggage tags was transferred to Pan Am 103, which then stopped in London before departing for New York. The breakthrough in the investigation and the evidence of the Libyan connection came in the search of nearly 850 square miles of territory covered with pieces of the aircraft. Investigators found a tiny fragment, smaller than a fingernail. Scientists determined that it was part of the bomb's timing device and traced it to its manufacturer, a Swiss company that had sold it to a high-level Libyan intelligence official. The investigators also traced clothes found in the suitcase which contained the bomb back to this store, Mary's house in Malta. The shopkeeper identified one of the Libyans indicted today as the man who bought the clothes in December of 1988. Lord Fraser, who directed the investigation in Scotland, said today the two men will be hard to get because they are known to be in Libya. The warrants will be circulated through Interpol, but it is considered unlikely that they will be arrested in the ordinary, normal way. At the White House today, the president's spokesman said that the United States is considering a wide range of options. Under current law, agents can apprehend fugitives wanted for terrorism wherever they might be. A top Libyan government minister told ABC News late today that the indictments were rubbish and that each detail could be proved false. But after all the accounts we have heard over the last three years, United States and Scottish investigators believe they have found the right country and the right two men. Pierre Salinger, ABC News, New York. Many of those who had relatives on board Pan Am 103 said they were gratified to hear today that the two Libyans have been indicted. Others were frustrated because they're not convinced they've heard the whole story. Here's ABC's John McQuethy. Susan and Daniel Cohen lost their 20-year-old daughter Theo in the Pan Am 103 bombing. And today's announcement that two Libyans were being indicted did little to ease their pain or their suspicions. When Acting Attorney General Barr called her today, Susan expressed her disappointment. I was very disturbed to see that there was nothing about uh, the Syrian uh, involvement or Iranian involvement. The Cohens and many other Pan Am 103 families think the Bush administration cut a deal with Syria to win Syrian help in the Gulf War. Once Syria became important to American foreign policy, suddenly the information that, it, well, no, it might not have been Syria, it was really Libya, suddenly that appeared in the press. The Cohens and others had heard reports that Syria was supporting Ahmed Jibril and his terrorist group, the PFLPGC, and that they were the leading suspects. Three years ago, members of the group were arrested in West Germany. Police found sophisticated bombs in their possession, and what police believed was evidence that Iran had paid them to blow up a Western commercial airliner. PFLP uh, GC has its, uh, its headquarters in <coughs> Syria, uh, has ties to Iran, gets funding from Libya, and was planning some attacks on civil aviation. Uh, it's just that they didn't do this one. Investigators spent many months trying to find the connection, but claim they never could. Even so, officials were quick to point out today that they will continue to look for a connection. And in the meantime, they say Iran and Syria, because of continued support of terrorism, will remain on the U.S. terrorist list.
John McQuethy, ABC News. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with a recipe for trouble. Take the latest poor economic statistics, add uncertainty.